Hello, everyone. My name is Yuki. I'm a technical marketing engineer in topology. And today, I'm going to talk about some fields. In today's On Top Live, we're going to talk about fields. I'm going to show you some field examples. I'm going to show you how you can visualize your fields in topology. And lastly, use fields to control our geometry. What is a field? In topology, everything has a field associated with it. You might know your definition of a field as an area of open land, especially when planted with crops or pasture. I just took that straight from Google, but in anthropology, field is actually a rule that associates a value to each point in 3D space. So let's visually understand this. So on my screen, I have this cube, and this is an NTOP implicit representation. So to we want to take a look at the field of this cube. So to open up the field, you can click view and find field view over here, or you can simply click on the block and press F on the keyboard. And you'll notice a light blue black gradient on the outside, but when I on toggle the visibility of this cube, you'll note also notice a blue purple gradient on the inside. So this is where things start to get interesting. So these colors, are actually very intelligent and have data associated with them. So if I go over to the field viewer window over here and you'll notice this probe values, if I simply check that off, now wherever my cursor is on that field, you'll notice a distance value is hovered right next to my cursor. So at the boundary of my cube of this field, the value is zero. And now if I go further away from it, into the light blue black gradient area, the values increase positively. And meanwhile, opposite on the purple blue gradient side, if I go further inside, the values turn negative and increases negatively. So let's take another, let's take another look at a different example. So this time I'm gonna bring out my spherical TPMS. And this is literally a sphere with TPMS inside of my part. And if I wanted to take a look at the field once again, I'm gonna toggle off the visibility. And at that section cut, I'm gonna turn on my probe values again, you'll notice the field. So where I section cutted my part, at that area, you'll see where my values are positive and negative. And I can simply move this up and down. You know, I'll get different shapes because my TPMS, spherical TPMS is not equal in geometry all around. You can visually see where the positives are and where the negatives are. So not only does geometry have fields associated with them, everything does. So instead of a geometry, let's take a look at a plane this time. So I brought in a plane, it's a little hard to see, but you can notice, you can see that this plane is pointing towards the positive y direction. So if I was to turn on the field viewer for this and bring the size down to like 20, you'll see that, oh, sorry, there we go. Bring the size down to 20. You'll see that anywhere in the y positive, the values are positive. And on the opposite side, the values are negative and increasing negatively. So, so far we've only been looking at fields with values of distance. However, fields can also have any value and even sometimes no value. So let's move on to another, another different block over here. We're gonna take a look at this stress field block. I'm gonna open it up and you'll notice that I ran a static analysis on this bracket. And so what does fields have to do with simulation or in this case, a static analysis? We can take out, in my case, a von Mises stress point map out of that and create a point map and then create a field from all these points. So I'm gonna once again, highlight this block because I created the field from the point map from my von Mises stress points. I'm gonna press F on my keyboard. And since we are working with simulation data, I'm gonna change my color map into turbo, turn on my probe values. And what you usually saw as your distance values over here, you now see stress values. And you can easily see 
where all your high stresses are and your low stresses are. So now that we've looked at a couple of different fields, the question comes, how can we use that? And this is where I'm going to introduce you to this ramp block. So you can transform something like performance data into shape data. You can do that with this ramp block, and that will associate changes in the field with certain values. And you can use that to describe your shape, such as your density or even the size of your lattice. So we're going to take this ramp, and I already inputted a plane inside of it. And what I want to do is I want to I want to change. I want to have control of my field. So let's say, for example, we're 10 millimeters away from the plane here, and we want a value of 1. And at the plane, we want a value of 0. And this is what the ramp block allows us to do. So you match up your min and max input and your output min and max. So since I wanted a value of one at 10 millimeters away from my plane, I simply put 10 millimeters away from that plane that it's gonna give me an output of one. And at the plane of zero millimeters, I'm gonna output a value of zero. So if I was to turn on the field of this ramp, you'll notice, turn on the pro values, at 10 millimeters away from my plane, which is roughly around here, I have given, I have a value of one. And at my plane, I have a value of zero. So we were able to define a new field based on another one. And that's how we can control this. So once you get more advanced with ramps, you can control a whole lot of geometry. We're going to take a look at this part. I ran a static analysis earlier, and then I took out the volumesis stress results, converted it into a point map, or created a point map out of it, and then I created a field from that point map. So what I want to do with this part is that I want to light it, and the first thing that comes into my mind is that I can either shell it, or I can infill this with some lattices. But I don't want to have a uniform shell thickness, and I don't want to have a uniform lattice thickness. So this is where we can use fields to drive our thickness. So I'm gonna bring up this von Mises point map again. And I'm gonna say that in those high stress areas, I want my shell thickness to be thick. And those low stress areas, I want my shell thickness to be thin. And pretty much that is like the condition that I'm giving it into, putting it into the ramp block. And by simply adding those conditions, and let me turn on the von Mises stress point map, you can easily tell that in those high stress areas where the orange, green, yellow areas are, the shell thickness is a lot thicker in those areas, whereas in the low stress areas, the shell thickness is a lot thinner. And this could also be done the same to the lattices. So in those high stress areas, the lattices are a lot thicker. Let me pull it out a little bit so you can see. There we go. So the lattice thicknesses are a lot thicker. And those low stress areas, those lattices are a lot thinner. So yeah, I hope you got a good understanding of what fields are, how to view them, how you can use them. For example, that ramp block and create really complex geometries and end topology based on fields or fields from simulations. If you're curious about anything at end topology, set up a few minutes with us and a demo to get your questions answered. Go to entopology.com, click on Get a Demo, and simply fill out the form to speak with an Entop expert. If you're an existing user and want to dig deeper, feel free to check out support.entopology.com to access our help center.